When you're learning music, it is imperative that you try to take every opportunity to make more of a learning situation. A lot of us are playing these Suzuki songs we're here in the second book. By Suzuki book two, you should not need these fingerings. Look, every single note has a fingering on it. That's unnecessary. And so you should always challenge yourself when you make a new approach to songs. Erase all the fingerings if they're there already, especially if you're learning to read music, and then pull out your scale book and then try to play the song as it is without the score, without anything on it. This is in G major. If you know your one octave G major, or at least two octave G major scale. You know that the third finger is played in first position on these two middle strings, second finger on A, and you may have to shift up here because it goes into the fourth position. And you see all these notes correspond with the key signature of G major, except this note right here. This is where you need to find, okay, this is a little bit different. Where can I find this in my scale book? So you pull out your scale book and you find that that is actually a plus four. So this would be called an accidental, a note that does not happen within the key signature. And so I would mark that right there. Anything that is unexpected. Same thing happens here. So after you have erased all of the fingerings, put in the ones that are the accidentals, notes that don't occur in the regular key signature. Toward the end here, measure 25, the mental muscle, we do have a slight key change. It looks like it's in F major. And so we have these, this is where you're allowed to make a little bit more of your fingerings. And of course, if you have a standard way of placing your fingerings in, I suggest you do so. The importance of making fingerings in your music is something I call making the music your own. And this is what's happening here. You take all those fingerings out, even if it's the same number, it's important that you make the music your own. And so what I'm doing now is I'm completing not only the loop, I'm closing the loop, there it is. Place the second finger here. But I'm also making this music my own using my colored brackets. I really like to use these colored brackets, maybe a little too much. This would be the lower second position here. That's an extension, that's not necessary. Again, I have just made the music my own. Here is an upper second position. I'll just put my color bracket there. I use the color brackets because it's helpful to visualize what is happening in the music. With all of those extraneous fingerings out, I'm going to give you another example. Watch what happens. This is what it looks like. To the modern eye, I think this is quite complicated. This is too much information. There's just too much happening. And if you are in Suzuki Book 2 and reading music, you should make this music your own. Last bit is right here. This is something that you should know already. This is the upper second position. And so we're going to place our one on the F, on, excuse me, on the C sharp here, one here on the E. These are open A's. And this is a four. And you can even continue that position, the upper second position, without any Movement. See, again, I just repeated the notes, but now the notes are mine. I know a publisher has made it. I have made these notes myself, so I'll finish it real quick. This is the upper second position. I've been talking a lot about knowledge base recently, and if your knowledge base is light on knowing what this position is, that this is something that we should review. I would like to play a little bit of it for you. I'll both show the fingerings and then the bowing. First, the fingerings. Thank you. 
Now to finish out with the Boeings. <laughs> My counsel to you about the Boeings is these open Ds. You want to make them as smooth as possible right here. This open D, after that, whatever it is you play prior, but this open D must be played with a weighted, a weighted, very heavy, very heavy, um, that open D must be played with a heavy, loose wrist arm. Mm -hmm. See what happens? I'm going, uh, I, the, the, it collapses. Well, regardless of what fingering you do, let the, the arm break and get a little, get into the cello a little bit. That's the best I can give for you for this song. <laughs>